I'm Oscar from Elmer Racing and I think 2000 horsepower is the new 1500 horsepower. <laughs> Let me explain what I mean with that about our V2 update to our Thor engine. Um, so first in 2018, uh, that's the V1 cylinder head here at the bottom, uh, we completely redefined the sort of high performance engine market there. Typically previously if you wanted a lightweight circuit racing engine that wasn't extremely expensive yeah, you were limited to about 800, 900 horsepower, something like that. We pushed that up to 1,500 horsepower with our V1. And now we're in 2023 already, and looking at some data, speaking to some people, yeah, we really think 2,000 horsepower is the new sort of a power level for really lightweight uh, engines. And this was also, of course, uh, push our power to mass ratio even better than what it already is on our uh, Thor V1 engine. Performance comparisons. So our Thor v V1 uh, was already the highest power to mass ratio circuit racing engine ever, uh, including all Formula One engines. There might be some engines somewhere that hasn't raced or just is so strange that, it, that there are no specs anywhere. Uh, but as uh, as far as we know, uh, the V1 was the best. So uh, we recommended that for 1,500 horsepower and including the turbocharger uh, exhaust manifold, uh, that sort of uh, accessory stuff, around 150 kilograms. Uh, so the long block is 106 kilograms. Uh, with the V2 upgrade, uh, the engine actually is a tiny bit lighter, uh, but still uh, approximately the same 106 kilograms, uh, or with the uh, whole engine package, uh, 150 kilograms. And yeah, bumping that recommended power output now to 2000 horsepower, so even better power to mass ratio. And power to mass ratio is of course super important for circuit racing when you start having high downforce numbers. Of course, having a lightweight engine and a lightweight car is always beneficial for acceleration and for braking. You, you, you need less power to accelerate the lighter weight you have, or if you have a lighter weight, you just accelerate faster, as long as you have grip, of course. Uh, but the main benefit is when you get into uh, cornering with high downforce stuff, then uh, the mass of the car is pushing you outwards so the lighter the mass you have of the car, the faster you can go through the corner uh, because you have the added uh, traction from the downforce pushing the tires against the ground. So that is really the main thing. Once you start having massive amounts of downforce, then weight gets super, super critical. You want to save every single kilogram you want off the uh, car and uh, engine package, of course, also. And yeah, I mean, there are lots of big V8 engines, uh, even our uh, Hell V6 engine, for instance would be really good for circuit racing use, but there's just no way you can get that engine as lightweight as our Thor engine. And if you don't need more than 2000 horsepower, which is probably 99% of circuit racing racing use cases, then uh, yeah, our Thor V2 definitely the best engine on the market at the moment for circuit racing. Uh, but let's take a quick look here at the exhaust side. So uh, the exhaust uh, port exit remains the same, but we have moved the uh, port upwards slightly and the uh, port shape is also straightened out a little bit. Uh, the bolt pattern has to have has to have been changed a little bit also uh, just to be able to fit that with the cylinder head. We still have the same valve sizes, but this should improve uh, exhaust flow and especially uh, heating of the cylinder head because uh, there will be less turbulence on the uh, short radius side of the, of the exhaust system. And another one of the uh, main targets with the V2 update is to reduce the amount of coolant flow required. So we're using the coolant uh, through the head more efficiently, routing more of that uh, where it needs to go and less of that where, where we don't need it. Uh, let's take a look at the intake side. So the intake ports uh, or the um, manifold side of the port has uh, grown significantly. This is actually the correct size to fit the uh, valves, uh, val valve diameters correctly. Uh, this is the uh, legacy uh, original uh, Porsche manifold size and with the original uh, injector location. Uh, we've also moved over, so uh, yeah, the port size of course enables getting a full horsepower out of the cylinder head. That allows us to run uh, high power up to a uh, higher RPM, which yeah, really is, is a good idea always to utilize the full RPM range that you can with the engine. So we're expecting this to run up to 9,000, 9,500 RPM depending on teams. And uh, yeah, typically power band will start at 5,000 RPM or so, depending on uh, turbocharger selection. And uh, yeah, then we also moved over. So 
we still have the cutout here for a single uh, injector, but we will be recommending using these a double injector uh, location. So we have one injector per valve, and these are specifically designed. They're not like two injectors close together pointing somewhere, but these are actually pointed uh, to the valves to minimize uh, wall wetting as much as possible. And uh, that really allows uh, using cylinder cuts much more effect effectively uh, so that you don't end up with lots of, uh, of uh, fuel puddling on the port walls that when you cut the cylinder, you still have lots of fuel going through it. And uh, yeah, then when you bring uh, cylinders back, you don't need as much enrichment either. And this also benefits acceleration enrichment and mm -hmm. engine mapping and also makes running uh, fuel cuts much easier and, and uh, sort of safer to tune, should I say. Uh, we have moved a sensor location here to make the intake manifold manufacturing a little bit easier. This will depending on the uh, uh, layout. So we do have a, a reference uh, intake manifold that we can make if the customer requires that. Uh, but typically you will have a super tight space where you want the engine to go. So the uh, customer will be doing their own intake manifold and just moving this uh, to a central location uh, aids with uh, space there. So definitely worthwhile to do. Uh, then we also have uh, these holes here, these are for in-cylinder pressure sensors. So they are not connected to the spark plugs or anything like that at all. They have completely dedicated, uh, dedicated mountain locations. Uh, these are really recommended when you start going up to 2000 horsepower and, and start running tens of seconds down a straight at, at full power to really be able to monitor and, and uh, tune the engine power and, and uh, cylinder balances and actually see what the cylinder pressures are. So you actually know how hard you're pushing the engine. Okay, bonus info, guys. Um, so with the uh, dual injectors and being able to uh, run uh, cylinder cuts more easily and uh, anti-lag and launch control, so the Thor engine in circuit racing use will typically not need any form of anti-lag at all. It has so much power normally aspirated already. And yeah, so you shouldn't have any need for that. Uh, but with the development of our ER8 race car, uh, we have, for instance, noticed that, that uh, moving the exhaust around a little bit so that we can utilize the exhaust to help boost or to like stabilize the IRO or make it easier to produce more downforce, that is actually a huge influence that is very easy to achieve. Uh, but with that, then the exhaust flow starts influencing your downforce levels and performance levels on your car. So we've really wanted to uh, maximize the sort of usefulness on this on extreme downforce setups and uh, setups where you have uh, exhaust influencing the uh, overall aero package and specifically the aero package designed to utilize the exhaust flow. So with that, you will want to, when you lift off the throttle, uh, you will typically want to use a strategy very similar to anti-lag. You might not need to like run the uh, EGTs as high and keep the turbo spooled but you want to keep the basically throttle open all the time so you get a maximum amount of airflow through the engine. And you might want to dial in some form of a little bit of, an, of I mean, eventually it's the same thing as anti-lag if you really want need to crank up the exhaust gas flow, but uh, just sort of a mild form, then you can just run a cylinder cuts and ignition retard, which is kind of the same thing, but you can just run more cuts to keep the EGTs lower to uh, yeah, improve the lifetime of your exhaust uh, manifold and turbocharger. So uh, uh, with with that sort of in mind, doing these really high-end setups where you're use, utilizing the exhaust flow, also uh, doing a, a two-injector setup specifically designed to keep wall wetting as low as possible. I mean, you see dual injector setups in other uh, platforms also, but they're almost always not uh, optimized to keep uh, wall wetting as low as possible as we do on, on all our engines, basically. I mean, both our, our existing uh, uh, Rex and, and our new Hell engine already have those. And now on uh, Thor V2, we're also doing that upgrade. And yeah, just uh, overall allows a sort of wider operating uh, use case for the engine. And the only downside is really, really that uh, idle tuning and stuff like that gets really tricky when you have uh, really large injectors that are optimized like this because you don't get uh, ideal air fuel mixing if you're just using one injector. So you really need to use two injectors all the way down to idle, which with some ECUs might be a little problematic, like doing really accurate injector controls at super short opening mm -hmm. times. So you might need to move over to using a single injector in that case, which I mean for race engines isn't a problem. 
but if you're tuning for really high uh, fuel efficiency stuff at idle then this uh, dual injector setup might not be ideal or the, then you uh, just want to use uh, smaller injectors of course and then the problem goes away of course uh, but anyway uh, just a quick update so this is also <laughs> basically our engine is also optimized to improve your uh, iro setup on your car <laughs> nice anyway thanks for, th for this time and see you guys next time bye